The current condition of the Lagos Badagri Road seems to show that the federal and Lagos state governments do not care about the welfare of the lives of millions of Nigerians who ply that road on a daily basis. This is the opinion of many residents living in the area as they recently stormed the street to register their displeasure. Joining us to speak more on this is Ovi Manuel Kuponu, the publisher, The Voice Community Newspaper. Thank you for joining us on the news this morning. So I'll just put you straight on the spot by asking, have you observed any improvement on the condition of the Lake Osbadagri Expressway? As I speak to you, the Lake Osbadagri Expressway is still an embarrassment to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That role is an embarrassment to ECOWAS. And uh, as I speak, there is no form of improvement at all on that road. That road is something all Nigerians living on that axis are crying about, and they want the government to rise up and do something meaningful on that road. How are the people coping, really? Because they have to move from place to pay, place and get uh, their lives going. How are they moving about? Well, presently, there is, there is almost uh, a standstill in Madagri. Madagri has been cut off from, uh, from Nigeria. And uh, even Lagos State government is doing nothing about it. And the people are crying every day. And uh, you, if you, from the pictures that are online, you will notice that the road has actually become a gully. It has become a kind of well where people have to swim. Their cars have to swim before they move from Badagri roundabout to Agbara towards Ijaneke uh, on their way to Mile 2. So the, the, these days, transport fare has gone off. From Badagri to Agbara is almost a thousand naira. From uh, Igbuelirin down to Badagri and about is about uh, about that range. And you begin to ask yourself: Is there any government in place in this country? And uh, the, the, the most embarrassing part of it is that you know this is the same route that uh, diplomats, uh, members of the international community, uh, fly when they are going to ECOWAS and other other West African countries. And sincerely, it is at this time, it is shameful, it is disgraceful to be a Nigerian living in Badagri. Uh, let's talk about the reactions so far from the people. There are thousands of posts and comments uh, from youths and uh, on um, all kinds of uh, platforms saying that youths were arrested for protesting uh, the bad condition of the road and that the Lagos State Commissioner of Police has been quoted as saying that the Badagri protesters were arrested because of their unruly behavior uh, during the protest. Can you tell us exactly what happened so we don't go by the social media comments? Yeah, uh, luckily I am one of those who protested on that day as a journalist protest was going on and I have to be part of it. I have to cover the event. I have to report it to the community. We were there when the policemen came around. For the uh, CP to have come out to say that the youth of Badagri were unruly, I think that is actually unruly of him too, to have said anything like that, because he was not on, on the spot. And uh, when the first set of guys were arrested by the DPO of Badagri, Okay, I think we Paul have... Peter okay. Besu of Delva. He came with his voice at Aradago Junction. And that is where the, a peaceful protest was going on. And we, we, we had to stop to make another round of speeches. We are, we are students of history. We follow non-violent uh, protests. And that is why we believe that at every point, every landmark along that road, we should stop to make speeches so that people can get to understand what we are saying. A lot of media houses were, were, were on ground. Uh, newspaper uh, reporters, TV reporters, radio reporters, everybody was on ground. And there was no any report in the media, whether the social media or the conventional media, to report that there was any violence or any unruly behavior. Some of us are of high integrity. Some of us are from very good backgrounds. 
we will not be involving violence. We will not be All right, uh, but in, even in though your audio is a bit uh, hazy, um, we will try and fit in this very last question uh, before we let you go. Um, you, your group have issued an ultimatum to the federal and Lagos state government uh, to mobilize contractors back to sites to fix that uh, road. Um, why do you think there is a hesitation to take on that project? And what options are left for the people going forward? Yes, we have given the government uh, uh, an ultimatum to deploy their contractors back on that road so that the people can smile. Because the essence of leadership is to make the people happy. And uh, But unfortunately, this government doesn't seem to be listening to the people. They are trying all they could or they can to suppress and oppress the people. But we are saying that it is in the best interest of this nation. For if you, if you, if you, if you want Nigerians to be patriotic, if you want Nigerians to believe in Nigeria, then the welfare and security of Nigerians should be the the priority of government as stated in the constitution. So what we are saying right now is on that day of protest, we gave them 10 days, but our, our leaders, our elders, our community leaders have been speaking to us to, to consider extending it. That is why we are looking at extending it. But the truth is, we know that they will not do anything. So the people, we are mobilizing again. We are mobilizing our people, we are mobilizing our youth, we are mobilizing all our friends and associates all over Nigeria to draw the attention of the world and the international community, especially to what right. is going on on the Lagos Badagri. Uh, the economy Ukunu. of Badagri has been the people Thank you very much for joining us on the news and please be safe even as you uh, protest uh, for your rights. Thank you so much.